Hello and welcome to LiDAR Lab. I'm Lewis Graham, CTO of Q Coherent Software. In this session we're going to look at an introduction to LP360 for ArcGIS. Now if you're using the standalone version of LP360 we'll soon be releasing a video that focuses on that because there are a few slight differences. Alright, in this screen you see ArcGIS. I'm running 10.1. The first thing you want to do is check out licensing for the product. So bring up Customize Extensions this will bring up the menu that controls extensions in ArcGIS and you notice that I have LP360 advanced license loaded and checked. Um, if you don't have a version of LP360 loaded or appearing in this menu then check out our evaluation video that's also in LiDAR Lab. Second thing you want to do is look at the menus that you have displayed for LP360. So just right click in the menu area of ArcGIS. We'll want the LP360 menu and for this intro will want the LP360 viewer integration. So we'll have those two menus brought up. The first thing you want to do is load some LiDAR data or, point, or elevation in point cloud format. We can load two formats of data, LAS and ASCII. If you load ASCII, we'll convert it internally to LAS. Now you don't want to use the data load button within ArcGIS. You'll want to use the data load button within LP360 and this is a little stack looking uh, icon with a red plus on it. Click on that you'll bring up a file browse menu. If you don't have any LAS data you can download that from our website. Here I'm going to load two LAS files from a Huntsville, Alabama uh, county mapping job. As soon as I click the files that I want to add you notice that I have three options. Add them with read only access, uh, read write access, or just load the footprints and not the data itself. LP360, unlike some other tools, handles hundreds of LAS files simultaneously and this gives you some control over how those are loaded. For our uh, particular operation in this intro, let's just add them read-only access. Now you may get a message that overviews are being built and that just means that pyramiding files are being created that allow faster zooms of the data. So here we have our two uh, files loaded. We see that a LAS layer has been added to the table of contents and we're ready to start viewing. Now you notice the boundaries that are being displayed around these tiles are in red and that indicates that these files have been loaded for read access only. I can't write to the LAS data. I can turn off those boundaries on the LP360 main menu and you see display boundaries and I just click that and so I can turn those on and off and they represent the outline of the data in each of the LAS files. So we've got data loaded, we have our modes and of course uh, manipulation of the screen simply uses the tools in ArcGIS. So you've on the ArcGIS toolbar you can zoom in, you can also if you have a wheel mouse you can zoom in and out by simply moving the wheel on your mouse zoom out, pan, fit, so forth and so on. Now in LP360 we present a number of different display modes of the point cloud data and you'll see that on the icon that says display by elevation or whatever you happen to be uh, displaying and then we can display by elevation where we're simply color coding by the height or the Z value of the point cloud, we can display by color band. So this again is displaying by elevation, but rather than a gradual uh, change between elevations, we have a sharp boundary and you get this semi-contour looking view. We can also display by classification. And display by classification colors the data based on how it's been classified, ground and orange for example, green for vegetation, red for buildings, and so forth. Uh, if we zoom in closely on an area of this file, then that becomes more apparent. You can see some trees, some ground classified in orange, and so forth. All right, moving on with the display modes, we can display in grayscale. So here we have the intensity of the return of the laser pulse. Now not all LAS files have an intensity value so if you switch to intensity and see only monochromatic colors uh, or just a single color of gray then you'll know that your data does not happen to have intensity. We can display by 
return combination. This is very important in a lot of LIDAR analysis. So I've got different returns being shown um, in different colors. I could display by uh, point source. And if I had a, an uh, image loaded, I could also colorize the uh, LIDAR data. Or, or actually, uh, if I have RGB values encoded in the points, I can display by color bands. This is not RGB encoded laser data. You typically see that more in mobile mapping. Now, an interesting thing is modulation by intensity. So let's again look at color by class. And I'm going to force the high resolution display. And we'll talk in a moment about what exactly that means. But I can also modulate this by the intensity. And you see that this gives a much more realistic view of what we're seeing in the ground. So I'm modulating by intensity by uh, applying intensity shading. Finally, I can look at different modes of displaying points. Right now, we're looking at just the points. But I can display by a triangulated network. So here I've switched to a the display to a 10. And I'll turn intensity shading off to make this a little more dramatic. So here we see displaying by a triangulated regular network. And we clearly see a building in the right-hand side of the screen, some vegetation, some ground. And all of this gray that you're seeing in the display are simply points that have not been classified. I can display by points superimposed over the 10, good for some types of analysis. I can display the actual wireframe of the 10. And to make this useful, I'm going to zoom in a bit closer on these points. And I'll switch over to wireframe display. And here you can actually see the edges of the 10. And finally, we have a points on wireframe. Uh, display that makes the nodes uh, more evident. Now the wireframe display is very useful for analyzing uh, break lines and we'll look at that in one of the advanced sessions on LP360. I'll switch back to display by points and zoom out a bit on this um, display. Now in LP360 we use reduced resolution data sets just like are used in image viewing uh, programs. And we use that to enable us to do very fast zooms. There is a button called Force 100% Point Resolution. Uh, and this button is used when we're doing overviews, but you're in an area where you need to force 100% resolution. And you'll notice that in this readout right beside the layer that we're working on, it shows us the number of points that are being drawn into the display and what percentage of overall points this represents. So right now, I'm drawing 33% of the points. If I force 100% resolution, then it says I'm drawing 100% of the points. Now, of course, you have limited RAM in your computer. And whether or not you can display 100% of the points depends on how much RAM you have in your particular workstation. All right, so those are the basic viewing modes within what I call the map view of LP360. Um, one other mode that is quite useful, of course, is to display contours. And uh, this button is right beside the display mode. And here we see contours being displayed in the um, purple color. I'll turn those off. And let's look now at the 3D view. So in the toolbar above the basic LP360, we have the viewer integration toolbar. And there is an icon called Define the 3D Windows Extent, which I can click. And then I can drag by left clicking, hold down the mouse key, and drag a box. And this brings up a 3D viewer window. Uh, the display modes are the same as in the map view. So I can display by elevation, by classification. I can modulate. And now to manipulate this view, the display controls are a bit different than in um, ArcGIS. Hold down the left mouse key to zoom in and out. So just hold down the left key and drag your mouse forward or back on your mouse pad for zoom. Hold down the right mouse key 
to rotate the view and you can hold down both simultaneously to pan the view. So this gives you manipulation control. We can hill shade this display if we're in a 10 display. So let's switch to 10. And we can do hill shade shading by turning this hill shade button off and on. And finally we can also display contours within the 3D view. Alright, I'll dismiss the 3D view. And finally we'll look at the profile view. So defining the profile view, again we have, then I'm going to zoom out a bit on the map view, and we have a button that is the second from the left that allows us to define a profile line. So click on that tool. Make a first click where you'd like the profile to begin. So here I am at the left of the display. Drag the mouse to the second point where you would like the profile displayed. So here I'm at the right side of this tile. Do a second left click. And now drag up or down or in the opposite direction that you drug the profile to define the width of the profile. Now it's not important to be precise with the width because we have a tool that will allow you to precisely set that. When you have the width that you would like, click the third time on the mouse button, a profile view will pop up uh, below your mouse view, all the, your uh, map view, although this is a redockable uh, control. And again, you see the, the different display modes that we have. Again, I can color by classification. Very useful. So now in the profile view, you see where I've got some ground, vegetation, etc. Click within this view simply to give focus to that view and now you can scroll your mouse wheel and as you scroll your mouse wheel you'll notice in the map view the profile line moves perpendicular to the defined direction of the profile. You can rotate or move the profile with the arrow keys on the keyboard. So if I click the left or right arrow keys I'll rotate the profile and if I click the up or down, I'll move the profile up and down within the view. Too precisely, I can also add graticules or turn them off. I can zoom this display much like the 3D view by holding down the left button and simply sliding uh, the mouse. And finally, I can set the depth of the profile by clicking on the Modify Profile Depth tool, it's currently set to 12.82 meters. And if I want to reduce this to, let's say, 2 meters, I simply tap in 2 meters and tab out of that dialog, or click out of that dialog. And I've now reduced the width of this profile. To dismiss the profile view, I can just click off in the X. So that's a very quick introduction to the viewing modes in LP360. In a second session, we'll look at some of the more advanced tools, such as filtering the data to affect what it is that we're displaying. Thank you for attending this session of LiDAR Lab.